Ajay Shavastav joins us now. On the day when markets are uh, up and they are running, Ajay is supporting the bulls with a green tie. Ajay, looks like Diwali has come one week early. It's yeah. like Dhanteras today <laughs> for the bulls. Dhanteras, not Diwali is not there. Dhanteras for the bulls today. <laughs> No, I think it's relief more than anything, if you ask me. I don't think anybody believes in the rally, what happened. And if I don't think anybody can answer what transpired yesterday from the, you know, 2% down to 2% up or actually 5% gap. So let's be honest. You know, to be fact is, we don't know why it happened. And uh, it's a good market to open up to. But I don't know whether there are now opportunities for people who want to get into B at this point of time. But one thing has become very clear is that you need to focus on the winners in the market. You know, very clearly, Infosys, after yesterday's results, has become the key winner in the IT space. So there is no point rejoicing the rally if you're a Wipro shareholder, for instance, or you know, holding another mid-cap IT company, barring mind-free. So the point remains, I think, Nikon, this is a kind of scenario which tells us that you got to stick with the big ticket winners in the market to expect that the share price crash laggards will catch up I think it's going to be a very flawed strategy in this market because typically the concept is, is fallen 40%, so I'll get a 20% return. I think that strategy is now getting clearly out of the market to say, there's a reason why stocks have fallen. You need to stay out of it. It's long periods of time and focus on the winners, even though potential returns are lower. And I think that's where if people are you know, listening today is to look at their portfolio and say, do I have laggards? And I need to get out of the laggards. It doesn't matter if today the market is up by 2% in the laggard because today you have liquidity, particularly in mid-cap space, tomorrow you may not have. So the moral is enjoy the ride, but get out of the slow coaches because they're going to absolutely railroad your portfolio. So where are you? Which is the Vande Bharat in your portfolio and which is a slow coach? Arre, bhai, one day, bhai, two days got mishap, so don't please. You know, that may happen. That may happen any time, but the fact that it is back on the track is important. So any good stock may flip flop for next couple of days. See, as I said, you know, the largest of all the, India is a beautiful country in the market because the largest stocks have lower risk and higher return. So you look at across any industry, look at commodities. The number one player is holding firm. Look at steel. Number one player holding firm. So, you know, if you look at the uh, automobile space, you got the you know, top guy in India, domestic, he's do doing the best among the all. So, you know, could, our bias is still in favor of the larger names compared to the small cap name at this point of time. And the mishaps are going to come in, I think, is going to come in the small cap consumer space. That is going to be a matter, small cap engineering space. That's going to be a serious problem in the market. Small cap exporters to the US, I think those will have a series of problems. Uh, and in large cap space, I think the laggards, people like uh, you know Reliance, which are into very low EBITDA margin businesses like garments and retail, etc., eight percent EBITDA. I think there you can seriously see a problem coming up in terms of their ability to continue to give value to shareholders. High value added companies will gain, I think, in this market and will continue to move forward. Yeah, and you know, but everything can fall. But the fact is. The guy who can come out of it is the big guy, the better guy than the guy who's laggard. So I think cotton spinning is again the same story. A lot of cotton companies have fallen by the wayside. Only one or two will survive. So I think the concentration of economic power in the country is now very clearly getting dominated by the bigger players. And you need to be with them for your portfolio. Okay, uh, Ajay, hi, good morning. This is Anisha good also morning. joining in the conversation. I wanted your take regarding ITC. The stock has already rallied, what, 50% this year? You still believe it is undervalued? And if yes, what's the target you have in mind? See, I don't have any targets in mind. I simply look at the company and say that once, thankfully, you guys have woken it up. So hopefully they will follow through with some of the actions they've been talking about, like IT company, like IT being uh, you know disinvested or at least sold or demerged or the hotel company being demerged. Now, should those actions happen? I think it's not even halfway down where it should be today, if you ask me. I'm not recommending, please, anybody. I'm not recommending. But I'm just saying, in my view, fundamentally, how can you have a company which generates so much of cash in a high interest rate environment do badly? It won't do badly, I can tell you. But the fact is, it needs to follow through. It, the demerger of hotel industry business has to come through. Demerger of IT company has to come through. The, perhaps the demerger of consumer may come a little later, but if that comes through, man, it's way off compared to the cash flow. Look at the cash flow versus valuation. It's, we knew it is way off at 200 rupees. We know it is way off at 300 rupees. 
And I think there is no better company in this space. If you ask me, the pure cash flow generation, it matches what people like, you know, Infosys are doing is spewing out free cash flow quarter to quarter. How many other companies do we see in Indian market which can give out free cash flows quarter to quarter on a short basis, not even 10 perhaps. So this falls in those top 10 category stock of free cash flow generators who will distribute to the investors. And hopefully if they follow through, I think there is a long way to go. There's still a long way. So, yeah, just to take that point forward, since you're talking about the cash generating companies, and I know you just hinted at the IT stocks, but given the um, underperformance we have seen this year, does it make for a good bet for a long term? Or do you think there'll be better entry opportunities? And where would you park your money if you had to take a bet? See, I have said that the day I stop active investing, I will park quite a bit of my money. Like already I'm on the way, I've parked a lot of my money in things like uh, REITs and power, you know, things like uh, transmission REITs. I've already done that. The day I do it, I'll put a lot of my money in IT stocks because at the end of the day, you know, over a period of five to 10 years, look at the kind of return they're giving back to the shareholders in terms of money back in the bank at the end of the day. On top of that, they have a running franchise of a business, which is not going anywhere in a decade or two. Technology may change, but these are the change agents. You have an assured market and it's still America. It's not gone to the rest of the world, which will happen eventually. It will come to India as well. How many, and there are three players in the market, you know, Accenture, Infosys and TCS. So if you put together three large global players in the market, two of them are Indian players. What better setup you want? If you're a more active investor, perhaps you can get better bang for your buck than other stocks. But I think if you're a passive investor and you got to retire with a good life with, a, you know, go to sleep, this is the best place to be. If the stock falls, yes, of course, things may fall, things go bad. That's the time you add up to good names. You don't get out of the good name. It's like, you know, it's like India's Walmart story. It'll keep giving you returns year on year and you can, you know, sleep peacefully, go for your holidays peacefully. I would really say to anybody who wants passive investing, this is the place you must park your money. Yeah, Ajay, what is this? I will, the day I will stop investing, Anisha is nudging me and saying that, Aray, Ajay will not come on TV. Warren Buffett made his big investment in Apple after I turned 80. Late Rakit Junjunwala took a large leverage in his portfolio when he was 60 plus. What is this I will not invest? By retirement age? I said, <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, listen my friend, I, uh, you know, uh, I don't know about Warren Buffett's wife or what she did to him, but uh, I have a little more active wife who says, I need more of your time now at least. But having said that, I think the moral of the story is really speaking, that you want peace of mind, it's the right place to be. You want to be actively, go for the mid cap, go for the small caps, take some hits on your chin, and you know, wake up every morning looking at the newspaper. Your two choices of investment thesis at this point of time. I Ajay, belong to the other thesis. It's a day after Karwa It's a day after Karwa Is that the reason why... Uh... That you're mentioning <laughs> retirement? Well, <laughs> it's okay. so... I'm telling you, you should be a mind reader. <laughs> <laughs> you guys should be mind readers. You should not be on the screen, man. And can you believe it? I'm not in the studio. Imagine what you'll read up if I'm in the studio from my body. Yeah, exactly. We you should be you. here. I have another question. And I think I can read your mind that since this is, we are interacting to you and then we'll interact with you after Diwali, Ajay Shavasta, before the interview ends, will give his best multi-bagger idea. And this time he will not give one. He will give three multi-bagger ideas. Am I reading your mind correctly? See, you told me a mind. On the, on the day of the Diwali, <laughs> yes, if my compliance can allow me to do it, I will certainly do it. <laughs> and he'll buy his wife also a lovely gift now today. <laughs> Man, that's over. That's yesterday. I can't have it again now. <laughs> okay. So, what is there on your shopping list for Diwali? See, uh, okay. Uh, what is my shopping list if you look at me? My shopping list is at this point of time is really focused at this point of time on the large caps, as I keep saying again and again. You know, the small caps, we have got it. It's done and dusted. Uh, some consumer spaces we are investing in and quite sharply that we're investing in because I think those companies will be sold. So that's a thesis of the investment, the consumer spaces. I think we have now started to pick up some investment, if you ask me, back in the sugar sector at this point of time. But that's a very tactical, it's not a strategic investment. Our strategic investment is still continues to be built on commodity play at this point of time in India. Uh, we are strongly building on industrial plays at this point of time. And that's where our uh, two biggest focus is. Uh, and third is we continue to buy and continue to invest in the QSR space. I think those will be still on the radar. It's not that something new will pop up on Diwali. 
But I think fact remains that between these three spaces, we will be allocating a lot of capital. And the last one we have already put in already is the power space where we believe that the best is still yet to come. I think that's going to be the most interesting space in the next five years or so because of the policy, supportive, three people running this country's power industry. Leave aside NTPC. Basically, there are three companies which will have the entire gamut of power uh, control of power industry in the country. Can you imagine what kind of that monopoly power, kind of returns that can come out of it? Incredible because you got nowhere to go. But to go to three players in a country this size for power. In America, there must be about 150 companies. In India size, three companies. So, you know, Nikon, the point is when you bet with those three companies, I think you're betting well in terms of control on India's most critical resource. Yes, government may come and put like steel uh, charge, et cetera, et cetera. But I think power is one sector they will not touch because we have short of it and we have seen what happened in the West. So I think these four sectors, I think should combine to give you all the returns that we should anticipate. I still don't believe banking is the place to be. I'm sorry to say this because if India has to succeed, RBI has to stop defending the bank's profitability and let the interest rate rise for depositors. People will spend more, consumer will come back to the market. Till RBI suppresses deposit rates through the bank and supports the bank, India remains inefficient. I hope some politician one day will convince RBI to say, let the deposit rate go up to 9%, stop giving liquidity to the bank, let them go to the market to compete deposit. Once people are sure 9 to 10% yield in the fixed deposit, which is matching inflation, they will spend more money and economy will revive. Just to protect the bank profitability, RBI is doing it. And I think that will come to a stop. And that's why we don't not betting with the bank to say, you are sitting on profit, which you're not making legitimately and hurting the economy. One day it will turn around. And that's the day. That's why I said industrial consumers, etc. I'm betting more because if that happens, India's economy will bound back quite sharply. So bet, I think, for the economy, industry, consumer, uh, a saver against the bank. What about an outside thought? Uh, this is just my personal thought that US economy comes back or US markets come back and uh, we could see a deep swell in some of the tech, IT, fintech stocks because at some point in time next year, Ajay, the Fed will hit a pause button and that time maybe India will underperform and global markets will outperform and they, they will take IT, fintech or new tech stocks along with it when the world outperforms. It's not going to be next year. It's going to happen in November. If the Republicans win the Senate and Congress, I think you will see a rally of a lifetime in the U.S. market. You know, the Democratic Party winning and the woke America brought the economy down. Look at where Trump left it. Look at where we are today. A disaster, globally a disaster. When you have a weak president in America, this is what happens. The Putin can come and fight election and destroy all the other economies of the world. You know, it's not Russian destroying Ukraine. It's everybody got destroyed. So if, you know, the trigger point is this November election midterm, I can promise you, and this, if the Republicans win Senate and Congress, you will see a mother of a rally before the year end. So just watch out for this election. It's not about the Fed pivot because Fed pivots are important because Fed pivots are response to global events. But if the Republicans take charge of Senate and Congress, they can control the narrative in America. They can control the events happening around the world. And if that happens, you got a rally coming your way. Maybe perhaps yesterday also people found comfort because the new things, the statistics coming out say that the Republicans will win both the things. And if it happens, I'm telling you, gear up for it. That will be the day we'll have a program and show. I think it will be a 5% plus market if Republicans win Senate and Congress in the U.S. Rally of a lifetime, that's what you're saying. And we'll call you for that show as well, Ajay, not to worry when uh, the time comes and if, of course, the time comes. But, you know, you spoke of industrials, but given that everyone's talking about this huge manufacturing boom, a manufacturing renaissance, if you will, how are you looking to play that space? Is there, you know, a tilt within, say, defensives or look at, you know, the CapEx theme? How are you looking to play that space? Listen, so... If the capex has to happen in this country, the capex will start with the commodity supplier who's going to supply you aluminium, steel, and etc. Right, copper and zinc and lead, etc. So it has to start from there, and there there is a monopoly of a maybe a single company in some products, maybe two, three companies in two other products at the end of the day. So I think you will play will start if you really believe the capex story has to start from commodities, and then it will move to suppliers. Like I'm not recommending a name, but give me an example like a CG Power and supply, right? 
you have Siemens as one of them, and you have other companies. So I think they will be the beneficiaries of what will transpire. First, the commodities, then will be the, those companies will come into the play at that point of time. So I think it's a very good part, very small set of five, six companies who are the key infrastructure players in this country and engineering players in this country. So it's not a big market. It's not a big uh, kind of segment of uh, companies in it, but these are about five companies so that's the way commodities and then is the engineering uh, machinery suppliers and who are supplying the latest technology and you know my view is that yes the capex binge will not happen because uh, the uh, you know the pli will happen and so on because that's we already seen what's happening on that front it'll happen because people will need to change their setups in environment norms so i think companies which are responding globally with new environment technologies will be the bigger winners and in that will come on the manufacturing side is the pharma manufacturing. It's done very badly in the last couple of years, but I think you should see a pickup of that basic thesis is that manufacturing will first come in engineering and pharma in this country before all other things in spite of the PLI. So I think those two industries will remain the bigger focus of us compared to all other. And we have seen what happened to assembly industry. Some of the stocks are listed on the stock and you see the results. EBITDA margins of 5, 4% and thereabouts. So PLI is not going to solve it. I think what will solve is the replacement of CAPEX to address the, the environment norms. Thing, Ajay. Always a pleasure interacting with you. Thanks Thank you very so much. much. You have a wonderful day. You too and have a lovely weekend. All right, that's Thank the view you. coming in from Ajay Srivasa.